Hi, in today's video we're going to take a look at the 6802 digital thermometer. This is a fairly cheap digital thermometer which can be picked up for as low as $18 which is around £13 shipped directly from China. In terms of manufacture it seems to be one of these generic products produced by a large factory and resold by other sellers so may have different names and branding. It comes with a not so badly translated manual detailing the device operation and lists some of its spec. It features two input channels for blade style K type thermocouples. Annoyingly, however, the slots in these sockets are not asymmetric, so it is possible to plug the thermocouples in the wrong way. They are labelled, however. It claims that the voltage across any combination of the four input pins can be up to 60 volts DC and 24 volts AC. The temperature range is claimed to be between a negative 50 and 1200 degrees Celsius, which is the normal operating range for a K-type thermocouple. It can display the temperature in degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit and Kelvin, with a five digit display with one digit for the fractional measurement. The display updates approximately every 0.4 seconds. Additional features include max, min and average and hold. And although two thermocouples can be connected to the device at one time, only one can be viewed on the display. Alternatively, it can display the difference between them. It comes with two K-type thermocouple probes with markings for the positive and negative pins on the inputs, which I can't quite get in focus here, but it allows you to match up to the pins on the device. When you plug it in, the display quickly changes to display the temperature. And if I go ahead and compare it to the temperature pro reported from my Gove H5070 thermohygrometer, which is a reputable brand and has an accuracy of plus or minus 0.3 degrees Celsius, we can see that the 6802 is accurate, especially considering the unit is stated as having an accuracy of between plus and minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. If I go ahead and plug in the second thermocouple, we can see that it also gives an accurate value when compared to the Gove, and that the T1 minus T2 setting is working as expected. Now the display does not have a backlight and the viewing angles above and below are pretty poor. The device comes with a soft plastic outer housing, which helps to prevent thermal transfer between your hand and the internal thermometer inside the unit. And this is standard on most thermocouple readers. It also hides the cheap plasticky feeling of the device. If we take a look inside the compartment at the back, which is accessed by this single screw, we see it's powered by a nine volt battery. Now you'll have to excuse me here, I'm using a very cheap old battery that I had laying around. Didn't seem to have many 9 volt batteries, but you get the idea. If you listen here, you'll notice there's quite a lot of space inside for the battery to move around. I solved this by adding a piece of bubble wrap around the battery and placing it back in the compartment. In terms of weight, it feels very light, a bit too light compared to other thermocouple readers, in my opinion. Without the battery, it weighs just 179 grams. And with the battery included, it weighs approximately 217. The supplied probes are 95 centimeters long, which is quite nice. And they have what is known as an exposed tip. So if I try and get a focus on the tip, 
trying to focus. You can see the two dissimilar metals welded together at the end and exposed. The thermal response time of the probes is around 10 seconds to reach a steady state value. So when applying this to a heated load, it takes around 10 seconds for the temperature to become stable. When removing the load from the tip, it takes a bit longer at around 20 seconds to return back to the ambient temperature. So, if we have both thermocouples at ambient, we can see the temperature displayed is not the same for both of the probes. There is approximately a 0.3 to 0.5 degrees Celsius difference between them. This could be due to either the probes or the internal circuitry or a combination of both. If we go ahead and swap the probes and then let the reading settle, we get the same temperature. suggesting that the probes are the same, but the input channels are not. Now it claims to have an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. And for ambient temperature, when compared against the Govi, this certainly appears to be the case. We can see that it's within 0.5 degrees Celsius of the ambient temperature. However, since most people buying something this cheap won't want to or even be able to perform a multi-point calibration to confirm this, I'm going to go ahead and test it at 0 and 100 degrees C to see how close it is. So the atmospheric pressure today is 1027 millibar, which means water should boil at 100.4 degrees Celsius. As we can see, the 6A02 on average is within spec. Slightly above, but still within the plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. The second thermocouple input is also within spec. When measuring the temperature of frozen water, which had been left to melt for a few minutes, my 6802 varied from 0.7 to 0.8 degrees Celsius. And so on average, this is actually out of spec. When switching to the second thermocouple input, the temperature varies between negative 0.2 and 0 degrees. So this measurement is in spec. So would I recommend this product? It depends. If you need a cheap, reasonably accurate thermometer for measuring temperatures between 0 and 100 degrees for the odd things, then yes, absolutely, for less than $20, it's worth it. A good use for this is to balance radiators in your home, and you can do this by measuring the temperature difference of the incoming and outgoing pipes, and adjusting the small lock shield valve on the left until the temperature difference is between 10 and 20 degrees Celsius. This can help in situations where in different rooms the radiators are too hot or too cold. Now, I have read through a post in the EEV blog forum, which I'll put a link for in the description below, for an earlier model of this device. And it looks like people have had mixed results when actually calibrating this with regards to the accuracy. There was one post also that detailed a not so easy to follow calibration procedure, but this was not in the manual that I received. I do suspect that a lot of the error is actually coming from the cheap probes that come with the unit, as there are a couple of different classes of thermocouple probes that relate to their accuracy. I might have just gotten lucky, or this unit is an improvement on the predecessor. If you are looking for something a bit more accurate and more reputable, for example, if you are a HVAC technician or a plumber, I would suggest something like the Amp Probe TMD50. Although a lot more expensive at around $60, the extra features such as backlight, extra weight, and higher quality thermocouples are worth it. So, all in all, this is a pretty good little thermocouple reader especially for the price.